The organs were removed with such precision they could only be possible with a sharp object and a trained surgeon, or something extraterrestrial altogether. Welcome to the Paranormal Post. I'm Clayton Morris. On this channel, we cover stories the mainstream media is scared to touch. Now, strange cases of cattle mutilations have been reported all over the western part of America since at least the 1960s. These cattle are killed in a bizarre manner and left with missing body parts, and investigators to this day are still going in circles trying to figure out what happened. The incidents have been reported in Harney, in Wheeler, in Umatilla counties in eastern Oregon, but this time it was beef cattle that turned up dead in the ranch lands of Crook County bearing signs common to the cattle mutilation phenomenon. Cattle ranchers in central Oregon's Crook County had a rough start to the year 2021, I guess as all of us did with the pandemic, but their experience was even more difficult. They found several cattle dead in their fields, but what makes the carcasses even more eerie is the state they were found in. There was no blood in sight, but several missing body parts with seemingly surgical incisions and extractions of their organs. Crook County Sheriff's Deputy Scott Durr was dispatched on February 27th of 2021 to the 966 Ranch on Southeast Van Lake Road. Owner Ricky Shannon of the ranch said one of his herd had been discovered dead two days earlier with an odd cut down its spine. Now, Shannon, who lives with his two sons, said that there were no predators or birds in the area by the time they discovered the carcass. He also didn't find any tracks or any blood. The cow's left cheek, tongue, and three of its teats had been cut away cleanly. But the eyes, usually the first body part to be scavenged after the death, were untouched. I want you to remember this point as we go a little bit later in the story, when skeptics say that eyes are usually the first things to go. There were no bullet holes, and a scan of the cow by a metal detector turned up nothing. No metal, no bullets, nothing. The cow was positioned 200 yards from the road near the edge of a field and some juniper trees. There were no tire tracks near the dead cows and no footprints of any sort. Then the mystery deepened a few days later on March 4th, when manager of the GI Ranch on Lister Road in Paulina reported that one of his herd suffered a strange death as well. Detective Javier Sanchez found a deceased black Angus cow lying on its side. Its hair was removed near the stomach. All four of the udders were cut off and its left cheek, tongue, and sex organs removed. Sound familiar? Between the front legs, an uneven patch of hair was missing, and in the middle was a prick mark. And then, the next day, Crook County Sheriff Sergeant Timothy Durheim was dispatched to the McCormick Ranch on Southeast Bear Creek Road to find what was thought to be a wolf kill. But when he looked closer, it was obvious no wolf could have harmed this cow. After examining the carcass, Durheim noted several strange incisions on the animal. One udder had been removed and a circular cut was made around the anus. And get this, the reproductive organs were removed without puncturing the gut of the Angus cow. How do you do that? The left cheek, left eye, and the tongue had also been removed. He also found a puncture wound between the neck and the shoulder, but he found no bite marks at all. Durheim wrote in his case report, quote, again, I noted straight, clean incisions where the cheek had been. There were no apparent animal or human tracks immediately surrounding the carcass, and only minimal blood in the area. I know from personal experience that if an animal is killed by or scavenged by predators, there is typically a large bloody mess around the surrounding carcass, end quote. Now, on March 6th, Casey Thomas called police back to his ranch a few days later. Remember March 4th, now March 6th. He found another dead cow bearing the same strange injuries. This one was more badly decomposed than the first one, but its left cheek was also removed and a two inch patch had been cut into the hair on its neck. Since these incidents are not a first in Oregon or on the West Coast, World-renowned expert Linda Moulton Howe said she believed that the cause of death is something outside of our world. Now, Linda's research is unmatched in this area, and I highly recommend you read some of her amazing books on this subject. She is a legend in this space. Other people, however, have had different guesses as to what happened to these animals. Some say it was simply natural decomposition process. 
Others point fingers at scavengers and people who are interested in harming the ranchers by affecting their cattle, trying to take away their livelihood. Linda Moulton Howe says, though, that's garbage. She's been researching these incidents since the 1970s, and she says the bloodless scenes and the trackless animal deaths are clear evidence that our Earth is constantly being visited by extraterrestrials. She said, quote, I began investigating bloodless, trackless animal mutilations, domestic and wild, back in Colorado in September 1979. She says, quote, when I was director of special projects at the CBS station KMGH-TV in Denver, Colorado, law enforcement and ranchers saw strange glowing circular craft at night that would extend beams down into their pastures where they would find bloodlessly mutilated animals after the sun came up. It was Sheriff Tex Graces of Logan County, she says, who told me in 1979, the perpetrators of these animal mutilations are creatures from outer space. Now, that's a sheriff telling journalist Linda Moulton Howe that these are not wolf attacks, but rather extraterrestrials. And just think about the context here for a moment, 1979, a sheriff telling a CBS journalist that these are not animal attacks, but extraterrestrials. Think how taboo this subject was in 1979. We're only now, in the year 2020, 2022, 2023, starting to remove the taboo around UFOs. This is a long time ago. She also made a surprising discovery. She mentioned that the law enforcement and other investigators have said the attacks always took place right after a big bright light flashed in the sky. Now, as part of her investigation, she discovered that the cattle mutilations have been swept under the rug for decades. She said, quote, I quickly learned that they were not confined to Colorado. I've been in almost every state in the United States and provinces in Canada. She says, I talked with a producer in the BBC in London, and they found a journal that went back to 1904 in Australia where sheep were mutilated, tongues removed, genitals gone, random organs removed, but no blood. She followed up her statement by saying that the mutilations were documented at least once in every country in the world except India. She also mentioned this fact in her book, which is a, a great book. I highly encourage you all to read it. It's called Alien Harvest. Now let's go back to Oregon now. Under Sheriff James Savage of Crook County, Oregon, told Northwest News Network, quote, well, yeah, it makes us quite angry. It's upsetting because, again, it's our livelihood. It's how they make their money and how they feed their families and support themselves. Savage also mentioned the incidents that happened in February and pointed out that the organs were removed in a meticulous manner. And some would even say it was surgical-like precision. Now, due to the gruesome act, law enforcement officers said that the scenes appeared to be without a drop of blood. Crook County Sheriff John Gautney said that his office has no leads, but cautioned there's no reason to panic. Gautney said, we've had cases like this over the years. They seem to come in groups and then they go away. We're not speculating on how these things are happening as we try to keep an open mind and look at all the possibilities, end quote. According to the Oregonian newspaper, detectives took photos of the dead cows to Prineville veterinarian Dr. Taylor Carlin to ask her what her point of view was on these mutilations, and she agreed that the deaths seemed unnatural and her opinions were included in a search warrant request filed in the case which was scanning for cell phone activity near the incident sites. Could they triangulate people who were out there that night? They turned up nothing. Charges in any of these cases could include trespassing, aggravated animal abuse. Each of these cattle are worth between $1,250 up to $1,400 each. So criminal mischief might also be charged. Carlin is a vet and interested in bigger animals, she's performed many of these post-mortem examinations on deceased animals. So whenever a mutilated cow would turn up in Crook County, she would immediately be brought in to examine the cow so she could personally examine a new specimen. But she says she has no answers and she's at a total loss. This is an expert who performs these autopsies or necropsies as they're called for animals. Maybe they were natural deaths, perhaps, Host of the podcast called Skeptoid, Brian Dunning, goes against the grain on this issue. He says there could be natural. What's natural about certain organs being removed with no blood left behind and other organs remaining? Well, he says, you know, this could be natural because when you look at these cases, it's clear to see that they are typical of previous cattle mutilations when you're connecting these to aliens or satanic rituals. 
but the unexplained and the seemingly mysterious elements can indeed be explained by science, according to Brian Dunning. Dunning said in an email interview with the Daily Yonder that when an animal dies in the field, predation sets in very quickly. The first responders are the insects and the birds. The exposed soft tissue is always the first to go. He says the eyes, the lips, the tongue, the genitals. As the animal is dead with zero blood pressure, there's no bleeding out of the body. The exposed skin then dries and it shrinks up tight, giving the impression of a perfect scalpel-like slice. Blowflies, as they're called, and other insects whose eggs can hatch in 10 hours will fill up these wounds with maggots, which can expose clean, dry bone in just a few hours or more. It's an interesting take here. But what about the Angus whose eyes were left untouched and half of the face perfectly removed? How is that explained by Dunning's thesis? Well, Dunning also said that in the 1970s, when faced with cattle mutilations, and it reached its peak at that time, one sheriff was doing his own research. He said the whole alien autopsy and satanic panic currents in pop culture reached a high in the 1970s, and cattle mutilations was a headliner for both. There was a sheriff in Arkansas, Herb Marshall, who wanted to see for himself what was going on with all of these reports, so he put a fresh cow carcass out in a field, and they observed what happened. After just two days, he'd not only seen the above bird and insect effects that he, we talked about, but the stomach split open from expanding gases and blowflies had completely cleaned out the internal organs. Now, at that point, his department stopped searching for mythical Satan worshipers. That's an interesting take from Dunning, but it's actually incorrect, specifically about the peak of the satanic panic, which took place in the 1970s. Actually, in the 1980s is when we saw the peak of the satanic panic uh, in the United States, specifically around the murder of Betty Ann Sullivan in northern New Jersey, which set off an absolute panic in the Catholic Church and police departments. They actually ran drills at the time in case their cities were invaded by Satan worshipers. This is true. This comes from my reporting and interviews I've done with New Jersey authorities and the heads of law enforcement who investigated murders and a murder-suicide in that area, which set off a wave of panic. Heck, even Geraldo Rivera came in and did a whole special on the satanic panic in the 1980s. So Dunning is actually wrong on that point about the height of this. But he might be right about the other aspects of this case. Heck, even the FBI also did research about these incidents in the 1970s, and they reached the same conclusion as these sheriffs. Now, Dunning said that the million-dollar question is what actually happened to the animals prior to their mutilation? That's the question, right? And that can only be answered by experts. He said the fact that the carcass experienced postmortem predation doesn't necessarily tell us anything at all about the cause of death. Predation tends to happen no matter how the animal died. In most cases, a veterinarian should be able to determine a cause of death quite easily with a necropsy. So far, in all of these countless cases like this, none has been found to have an extraordinary or inexplicable cause of death. That is according to Brian Dunning. For now, though, Dr. Carlin has sent some liver and blood samples for lab testing in Oregon, still waiting for those results. The police have also sent hair samples to the state crime lab in Oregon to get to the bottom of this. What do you think happened to these animals over the past 40 years? Is it as simple as natural causes, according to Dunning, or something much more sinister? If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, so you'll never miss one of our videos. Also, be sure to watch our other video that we just published on mysterious staircases that have been found in the woods miles from any road. Wait until you hear what happened to the members of the U.S. Forest Service who found these mysterious staircases in the woods. Click here to watch that video right now.